Hello, my name is Derek Harrison. I'm an interpreter at the Maritime Museum. And what we're going to show you in the next few um, episodes of the workshop is how to make a ditty bag. Basically, it's traditional canvas work that would have been carried out aboard a sailing ship, uh, even aboard a ship like Acadia. You can see our ship here. She's over 100 years old. Uh, <clears throat> she's just been refitted, and hopefully the ship will be open next year. So we're not right now in the petty officer's mess where the petty officers lived and they worked on the deck. So this was basically their living quarters. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a ditty bag. And this is the instruction sheet here. And this will be on the website on Facebook so you can download it. And we encourage anybody that has any questions about doing the workshop to come down to the museum. One of us will be here and we can actually help you work through the process if you have any questions. Hello again. So we're going to talk a little bit about our project and you might ask like what is a ditty bag? And the ditty bag of course is it comes in different forms, different sizes. There's no set size or dimensions for this type of thing. But this is it here. And it basically it's a small canvas container that sailors or sailmakers would have made aboard ship to house their tools in. And these are, this is a fit for splicing. I'll be going over some of the traditional tools that were used. This is basically a bag to put your gear in. And there's a little wall, there's a, a Turk's head here to seal it up. You have a lanyard here so I can hook it into my belt if I was going up into the rigging of the ship or somewhere up on the deck, upper decks. Basically, you've got it secured to your belt and it's all in one neat little container. Hello again. So in the last little segment, I've kind of talked about the ditty bag and what it was used for. Again, it's a small container that sailors would have used to hold their tools in. The other thing I'm going to mention is that it's a good piece to practice on. If you wanted to apprentice to a sailmaker, or say you wanted to repair or make a sail on board either Acadia or a sailing ship, the ditty bag is a good piece to practice on to get your skills up with the flat seaming which is here, basically putting the cylinder together, sewing the eyelets, doing the lanyard, putting the bottom, roping the bottom. We'll talk about this in more detail later. So it's an ideal piece to practice on if you actually want to apprentice to a sailmaker and repair a sail. So that's another advantage of, of the ditty bag. It's a very practical piece for housing tools and also is a, is a piece you can practice your skills on. Now, we talked about the ditty bag, but again, What's it made of? That'll be the next so Again, we're back with our ditty bag project. So, what is a ditty bag made out of? Now, what we're going to use and what the traditional sailor would have used would be sail canvas. Now, this particular piece of canvas here, I've cut to the size, which is in the instructions. Um, it's cotton canvas. This is a number six canvas. And when you look at the canvas, old sailing ship canvas, the way you would buy it is the, it went by a number. So, Say zero double zero was your heaviest weight of canvas. As you get up through one, two, three, four, and five, and six, and above that, the number gets larger, the canvas weave and the canvas weight gets lighter. And we can talk about that a little, little later when I have a diagram of the sailing ship to show you how they put the sails on. So this is cotton. At one time, cotton was, uh, it was woven in Nova Scotia by the Cosmos Canvas Company out of Yarmouth. We have one of their sample books in their sale off. So they actually made this in bolts, 44 yards. So this is the, this is the, again, I mentioned in the last section was the cotton canvas. Um, canvas, of course, on sailing ships could be cotton, flax, or hemp, or linen mix. Uh, in Europe, they tended to use flax or hemp sails. North America, you think of the schooner blue nose, it was all cotton. Um, but it's all natural material. So I've cut this to the size for the ditty bag. This is going to be a cylinder, basically. 22 and a half inches wide by 27 inches. So basically, you form a cylinder like this. And later on in the talk, I'll, I'm going to show you the stitches in that. So you're forming a cylinder with the cotton canvas. This is basically a number six canvas. Now, the next thing I'm going to talk about is the tools to sew the canvas. So we have the materials, which is cotton canvas and the tools. Now sailmakers tools, not too many of them, 
But we're going to look at that in the next section and talk about how you would actually sew the candles. Uh, we talked about the palm and the needle a few minutes ago. What we're going to look at now, the other thing, of course, you need is thread. It's called sail twine. Uh, this particular ball of sail twine I have is linen, flax, four parts, so it's strong. You have four little pieces wound up into one. The thing with sail twine, it has to be really strong because you're putting a lot of pull as you go through the canvas. It's usually doubled up. Um, years ago, sail makers probably would have acquired a lot of the flax from Ross Farmer areas that process flax as a crop, um, spun it up into twine, so they probably would have acquired a lot of the sail twine from the local farms or areas in, in the province. Nowadays, this is all imported from uh, Europe. This particular ball you can buy from the art college, uh, just across the street from us. Now the only thing you have to do to the twine, I don't have it with me today, is you take a block of beeswax and you have to wax your twine up with the beeswax. Okay, hello again. So what we're going to do in the next few steps, I'm going to, steps, I'm going to show you the instructions and then I'm going to go to the actual material and the tool we use to do what's shown in the instructions and that'll make it clear. So basically here we have our pieces cut out 27 inches by 22 and a half, cotton canvas, and I'm going to show you how to do the folds to make the cylinder. Again, we have the canvas here. You take, put your canvas down here. The tool I have is called a seam rubber. You can use a pair of scissors if you want. This is made of lignum vitae, it's a special tool to hold it like this. Take your take it canvas you want to fold over, hold it down like this. Flip this side over like this. And you see I've, I've drawn a seam line here. Rub it down like that. And once you get it flat nicely, then you can actually form your cylinder like this, and this is where we're going to sew. Oh, well, again, so the last segment we did, we focused on the instructions, and the last time we did was number one, two, three, and four, actually creasing the, the canvas down to form the cylinder. Now what I'm going to show you is we're going to go to step five, which is here, uh, actually how to thread the palm and how to start to do a flat seam. Now later on in this series of videos, I will have a sail bench out here, and I'll be sitting on the bench showing you the proper way to sew this because you should be sitting on a bench, not at a table. So, the basic seam that you're going to do is called a flat seam. You can see it here. It's two sides. One side, turn the bag inside out or flip the sail over and you do the other side. So the basic seam is called a flat seam. The work is called flat seaming. Again, we need to take our palm, which is here. I showed you that earlier. Normally when you thread it, you take six feet and you double it up to give you your working thread. Again, we're going to look at uh, how to thread the, the, uh, the needle. Um, normally you'd wax this up really well with beeswax to lubricate the thread or it doesn't go, it won't go through the canvas. So this is waxed. Take your needle and you usually take about six feet. It's about a fathom, which you're going to double up into three working feet. You don't want any longer because if you have too long a thread, it's going to start to knot up and get all tangled up. So start with six feet, double it up into three. You put it through the eye of the needle, which is here. That's the trickiest part to do. Take it like that. You double it up so we have three working feet. I would take my beeswax again, wax this up really, really well. You don't knot the end of it. We don't want knots on our canvas. We sew over the stitch, which I'll show you. Take your palm, balance it here, and that's what. You, and then we're going to start to do the flat seam stitch. So we're going to continue with flat seaming. I've threaded my thread, wax it with beeswax, put it on the palm. Now, if you look at the canvas here, I've doubled it over here. One of these overlaps here. What you do when you flat seam is you go down through one layer, and you bring your needle up, and you hear a little pop. That's so you're not sewing the whole bag together, like you seal it up. So you bring your needle down, hear a little pop. Then what you do <coughs> is you push up through the bottom layer into the two layers of the top like this. Push with that and get up through. Again, I will be sitting on a bench to do this. Now, as I mentioned earlier, you don't do a knot. You don't knot a knot. So basically take that, take the little tail, <coughs> you're going to sew over it like that. I'm going to hold this up. This here. Now again, you see there's a, a ragged edge here. You never leave a raw edge on camp. So what I would do when making the bag, you take your creaser, but you fold it over again so you don't have that. 
gives you another layer of soap. So, hello again. Uh, my name's Derek. Uh, we're aboard the museum ship CSS, CSS Acadia in the Petty Officer Square. The previous uh, work we did out here, I showed you some of the basic steps. Uh, right now, I'm going to show you where the sailmaker would work. Uh, previous steps, I was at the table, kind of cutting material out, but the sailmaker would sit on a sail bench. Now, the bench is, as you can see, is 14 inches off the floor and it's six foot long, and I'm going to show you the reason why it's six foot long. So it's a comfortable workplace. Uh, again, we start with our basic tools, sailmaker's palm, which we talked about earlier. Uh, my needle case, where I keep my sail needles. In here, I have one with a bit of twine already here. Again, it was linen thread, and it's waxed. You have to wax it really well with the beeswax. And as I mentioned before, it's like a fathom, six feet, doubled up to three working feet when you get it through your needle. So it's thread through the needle now. Uh, the really interesting part of the bench equipment, it's a very simple tool, it's called a bench hook. And this one I made myself, but it's a little hook that you put around a, either a post on the bench, or in this case I've got it on a little fid. Put the fid in the bench. You notice the bench has holes? That's to house your tools. So if I keep all my splicing tools and the ship's moving, whatever, so they won't fall on the floor and they won't roll off the bench, you have these little holes where you can put all your tools. So the neat thing is with the, the bench hook, it's like having a, a third pair of hands. So I sit on the bench, sit up here. Uh, the bench hook allows you hook your bench hook into the material itself, and then that keeps it flat over your knee. Get this over. So, put this here. Now you can see I got it nice and tight. And when you do the flat seam, you've got to have it tight or it's going to start to buckle. And as I sew, I reset the hook and I slide down the bench. So if you've got a long seam, say 20 foot seam, you slide down and re-hook. And this is where the, this is where your sail maker would work day in and day out. So take your needle again and the forefinger and thumb on the palm, push it down through, up through, that. And as I mentioned earlier, it's you tuck it underneath the first stitch, like that. And I'll just do a couple of stitches here. Like that. And you just work your way through. Now this needle, of course, is a large needle. I usually use one much smaller. This is a light canvas, but as you can see the stitches here, and I just tuck it under again. If it was heavy canvas, I'd use a seam rubber to flatten the seam like that. You never leave a raw edge. <clears throat> and down through, up through. But as you can see, the hook holds it really nice and you can get your stitches and then you kind of just shift down as you work down your seam. And this is, where, this is how the sail maker would work on a daily basis on the sail bench. Unless he's, of course, using a sewing machine or he's cutting the material out, uh, he'd be working on the sail bench. Now the problem is sometimes your thread gets a little narrowed up, but you can thread this. You go 45 degrees like that. So anyway, that's the sail bench, and this is where the sail maker would work. So, next step on your instructions is number seven. Now you've sewn the cylinder of your bag together. Now you're gonna fold down 10 inches from the top I'll show you, and <clears throat> that's going to give you your fringe. If you want a decorative fringe, which we have here, it'll also give you a base to hand sew your eyelets in and put your lanyard through. So, you've started with, there's your, say this is your tube sewn together, like here. This is the ditty bag here. You want to fold it down 10 inches, like that. So this is the tube, so you fold that down 10 inches so you get this size here. And that's your next section. So that's number seven. You fold it down, and that'll give us your fringe. Now, a word when you cut the canvas, and I'll talk about this later, make sure <clears throat> that the part you're going to pick apart, because basically you pull all these pieces out to give you your fringe, make sure that your warp threads are at the top. I'll talk about the warp and weft and weft and warp, because the warp threads are thicker. So basically, you're going to pick all the canvas out until you get the fringe here and then you can decorate it. Now with a ditty bag of course being utilitarian you don't have to put the fringe on if you don't want it. That way you save some canvas. But if you want this <clears throat> you fold that tube down 10 inches 
and then we'll start to do the fringe. Okay, so the last few steps, and uh, basically we're up to number eight on the instructions now. We showed you how to make fold the cylinder, do the flat seaming, do the 10 inch turn down. Now, of course, we've got to have the bottom for the bag. So what I've got is a piece of wood here. It's great to have a pattern. Uh, sometimes you use a piece of wood, you can use this for the bottom of the bag so you don't poke a hole in the, in the bottom of it. So we just do a circle here. Now with this, it's always fun with making these bottoms that it's kind of, you have to play with the canvas a bit to get it to fit. Take it like that. And see that? So I've drawn a rough circle for the bag. What you have to do is you have to leave a half inch outside that you're going to turn up to go through the bag itself. So basically it's going to go like that. Here. We'll cut this out here and you'll have your bottom. And the bottom basically will look like this after you've sewn it in. And we're going to use a round seam stitch. So a round seam stitch. You can see on number nine of your instructions. And basically I'm going to show you how to do a round seam stitch. So now we've basically put the bottom on the What we're going to look at today is what we call making a grommet. And a grommet is a little ring of rope like this. You can see the way I've sewn this to the bottom of the bag. It's one continuous piece of rope wound back on itself. Um, this is a reinforcement for the bag. Uh, the other use of the grommet is the eyelets. You can see on the larger bag here, these eyelets, underneath all this twine, there's a small ring of, of twine made from this here, done in the same way as a large piece of rope. So this is a grommet, and this is a grommet. To start with, you, this is half-inch manila rope. You can use any rope as long as it's hawser laid, which means you've got three strands here. Um, you normally you have to use three and a half times the length of rope the circumference of your, of, of your grommet you need three and a half times the amount of rope because you're going to be winding itself three times so you take a piece of rope like this three lay three uh, three strands and you unwind one strand now i've got one started here we did this last week so you see i've got one started here and i'm going to wind this back quick as i can you want to keep the lay of the rope as much as possible. You're probably not going to need to go all the way back. The lay of the rope is this here. If you stretch this and it gets out of shape, it's going to be really hard to put the grommet together because it won't lay back up properly. And it's, it, you can do it, but it's just not going to work. Uh, so it's a little time consuming doing this. Today, of course, they use spur grommets and uh, machine bedded grommets in a lot of stuff today. Uh, you will see brass rings sewn in as well. And this is a fun thing to do. Uh, the other thing we've used the grommets for is if you want to make a ring toss game for the backyard, instead of horseshoes, you can make little rope wreaths. That's going to be good. So I'm going to cut this. This should be Hopefully enough to go around. Now what you do is you take the grommet, take the rope, and you just lay it across. I'm going to make this really small because I don't know if I'm going to have enough rope. I'm going to make it really small, like this here. So I've kind of overlaid it like that, and so you can see it a bit better. I'm going to do it a little bit. Contrast paper. And you take it very slowly, wind it back on itself like that. Now, this is going to be really tight. If you make a grommet really small, the tension on the rope is going to tend to warp it. So, you've got to be careful with it because it will twist on itself basically. So what it do. See how I'm laying that up like that? And you just give it a little twist in the back. You want to keep the shape. And you want to leave space because remember, I'm going to go around three times. Go like that. Twist. There you go. So I've gone down once. Now I'm going to flip it over. And you see it there? It's forming a shape now. Now the real fun part is getting the third strand in so it looks good. Kind of just 
just tuck it behind like that, as you can see. It could be a little tight here. Like this. It does get tight, especially when you make it really small. That, keep twisting around, kind of just tuck it behind itself like that. gone around three times. It's a little tight. It's probably a little too small for the size of rope. And then what you do is you do an overhand knot. Like this. And you pull it down into the rope itself. Very really carefully. Like that. That. So kind of just with your fingers just Here, and that could be a little tighter. And there's your grommet. Hello so again uh, from CSS Acadia. Uh, our continuing uh, work on the ditty bag. And the last time I, I did a large version of the grommet. Now I made a small one up here. Again, this is larger than what you would need for a ditty bag, but it's going to kind of it, it, it can be used to show illustrate what we're going to do. So I made this up, and I mentioned that you could stretch this. So a large version of this, about two foot high, is in the sail loft. So I mentioned that you could stretch your grommet on the set fit and then tie your knot overhand like this, pull it down really tight. And the nice thing with the, the fit and the big one is you tighten it right down over it and beat it with a mallet. So you get this over here like that, take it off, you get a really nice tight grommet like that. Let's cut the end of that. And that's called a set fit, which we have in our sail off. Uh, about two feet, really big. I'm going to cut this off. So, say this is our grommet. Now, we have to poke the holes in the canvas. Uh, normally, with a ditty bag, you fold it over twice, maybe three times, so you have two to three layers of thickness here. So, you need something that's going to punch a hole through, so you can sew through. You can do it with a knife. I mean, there's all kinds of different ways you can do it, but. I made this tool in the shop. This is called a stabber. And if you look at sail sail makers trade books or sail makers toolkits, especially the Navy, they had this three pointed implement like an awl uh, called a stabber. And what you do if this is our this is if this is where we're going to put our grommet, just say I have two layers under here. You take it like this. Uh, preferably do it on a piece of marble or something that's you know, fairly resilient. And basically, and once you do that, you get four nice little cuts. You can see that there. See that? You get four little cuts in the canvas itself. Then you take this and you can ream this out. Okay. So I'm going right through. So that and the nice thing with this, if you use scissors or something, you're going to cut a lot of the threads. You're going to have a mess of thread. So after you do this, then you take your Marlin spike and you push this through and you ream the hole open to the size you want for your grommet. And again, remember, I'd have two layers, not one. So say that was the size you want. See, it's coming through the other end here. So you've got your hole. Then what you're going to do is you're going to take your grommet, lay it on top, ream it out the fit so it fits nicely. So there's there's what you're going to sew through. So basically you're going to take your needle and you're going to stitch around like this, hem it all around, almost like a button stitch. So basically I can probably show you. I'll use this piece here. Normally you double this up four times so you can cover more of the material. Again we're going to take our palm and knot it on while well, we sew over the so basically, I go through like this, stitch it like that. Yeah, I'll just put a, tie this off on the end, which I'd have, like that. And then basically, what you do is you fence around like that. 
that. Now, remember, I would have I have more thread. I have four parts thread because it's going to cover the canvas a lot. Like that. Let's see, keep it in place like that, and we just sew around the ground. That. Now, as you sew around the grommet, you want to keep the fit. You want to keep tension on it, make sure it stays round, it doesn't distort. So you keep reaming it out like that. Get up through again, and it just takes a bit of practice how to set the needle. That. And so basically, you go right around the whole room. Okay, in this last section on the ditty bag, or one of the last sections, uh, we, we, we've completed the bag, um, we pulled our fringe out, uh, we put our grommets in, we're going to put the lanyard on. Now the lanyard is just basically a carrying handle, and that can be basically any way you want it. Um, the way we start with the, uh, get the lanyard through, is you take, I'm going to use this quarter inch vanilla as an example to show some of the knots. Um, again, you're going to use something smaller. What I have used on here is this is called Marlin. This is a seizing twine, three parts of hemp, and it's tarred. And I've used it for this. It works well, but again, with this stuff, you can see how hairy it is. You have to wax it up. Put a really good coat of wax on it, and that'll make it Nice and smooth, so you can use it. Um, you don't have to use marlin. I like it because it has the smell of a pine tar, but you can use any cord of the same diameter that you can tie knots in. You can use synthetics. You can use hemp. I like using the marlin stuff myself. Uh, so you have to wax that up really well. Um, when you put it through the eyelet here, all I've done is seized it up. You can see how I tied it off here. You just double it over on itself and just tie it off like that. If you have a three part, you can actually do, and maybe we'll look at that later, you can actually do an eye splice through the grommet. I'm just going to grab a bigger bag here. Right back. So we use this larger bag as an example. So you want to you want to tie the lanyard. I've got actually I think there's six, six pieces, six legs of it. Um, you want to tie it, go through the grommet, and then either tie it off, or if you really want to get fancy, uh, you can actually splice it. So this is a bigger bag here. So you take it through the eyelet like this. I'm looping it around like this. Like that, okay? And this is called an eye splice. So again, we have three strands, like I showed you with the grommet. And basically splicing, you're just tucking it under one and going over one. So, we just take our marlin spike. And if you have really small cords, of course you have, you have to have really good eyesight to do it. Because, and you can use a needle. Take one piece through here. That's the start of your splice, okay? So once we get the first tuck, this is called a tuck. We usually do three separate tucks. Then we take this one. This is called an eye splice. Tuck it here like that. And then what I've got to do is I've got to flip it over back. Bring the last strand through the back of it. And there's your basic tuck there. You see your splice. Okay? Once you get that and you do three complete sets of that and cut it off for each leg and you've got your lanyard. So I'm just got a small piece. So this, say these were your legs for your uh, ditty bag. Now again, I've only got three, so if you had six, you just double them up twice on each one. But just you have to work. This work with three pieces, okay? Double them up. Take it like this. So the first thing we'll do is called a wall knot. Take one loop there. One loop up here. Should end up here. 
basically I just pull it tight. You see how they're coming together like that? It's called a wall knot. He uses a stopper knot. Tighten them up like that, like that. So that's that's your that's your start here. That's your wall. Okay. Okay. Now the next thing we're going to do is called a crown. So basically, you're going to wall and crown the whole thing all the way up. And it's it's a simple sequence of knots. You can certainly do a lot more complicated. We have we have other museum staff that can do diamond knots and. You can make this as complicated as you want. Uh, I just keep it very simple. So the crown knot is it's like a king's crown. You loop that one over like that, that one over like that, and you kind of go over under like that. I'll do this a couple of times. And so we've done a wall. So it's called a wall and a crown. Like that almost looks like a king's crown. Like that, like that, like that. Okay. So we'll do another crown knot. Crown knot, one over like that, one over like that, and these two knots you can build up the, uh, the thickness of your lanyard. And it's a fairly simple, but again, you can do all kinds of fancy stuff. The sky's the limit when it comes to a lanyard. Knots. That, okay? See how that's building up? We can do. I'll do one more. Take, do a wall like that. I think this is. This guy goes around up through. Like that. This guy comes underneath. Goes up through. He is basically locking this locking the pieces together. Like that. And then we pull the crown out. We'll do that again. We'll do that again. This one. Stop. There you go. So you've kind of done a, another wall knot. So you just do a series of wall knots and crown knots all the way up the landing there. When you get to the end, if you want to have it so you can hook it, it's almost like braiding your hair. I just do a three strand braid. Doing your hair like that. Pull it up like a three-strand braid, like that. Bring it around like this and tie it off. So then you can actually hook it. So that's pretty well it. You've got you've sewn your bag, you've done your grommets, we've pulled out the fringe. Uh, the large grommet you can sew on the bottom if you want. And there's your ditty bag. So I hope the uh, series has been uh, well worth it, and maybe we'll see you next time.